Hello guys, I'm Orbeta, your Welsh engineer, and welcome to the Mark II SSTO. And I've taken into consideration everything you've said, especially about the space plane wobble. I've put the wheels closer to the center of mass, more inwards towards the center of the body of the plane. As you can see, although I'm wobbling it a bit, it's not going out of control. So epic! This thing doesn't wobble on the runway, which means I can take off without destroying it. Not that I've destroyed them before, but it came, cool. I came quite close, although takeoff is a lot more stable. Now with this SSTO, I worked it out that I had to get about 2 kilometers up, level off, thrust up to about 440 meters per second. The extra 40 meters per second is so that you have to account for the drag that you create when you start to pull up and then make your way to over 10 kilometers. Now this design of the SSTO, as you can see, I'm using four shock nose cone air intakes because they're more efficient at high speeds. The wings are the large shuttle type wings with the large ailerons. However, I found with those, the ailerons, that once you pull up, it seems to flip. It's hard to control, so I'm wondering if I should use the smaller ailerons to control this. Or perhaps put controls on the front of the SSTO. Let me know if you have any ideas, guys. Always happy for the help. Right, when you get up to about 15 kilometers up, the speed starts to drop off, the air pressure starts to drop off, I should say. So that means the air intakes get lower and your thrust to weight ratio gets lower. Once that drops off to 0.2 or under, then switch to rocket mode. And on this space plane, I've got one large rocket fuel tank and then I think Four, four small Mark I rocket tanks. That's just enough to get into orbit. It's not enough to do any further maneuvers after that though, I found. Which may be a problem if you want to do things like landing on the man. However, this is a cargo SSTO. And what are we doing? We're actually going to build a space station around the man to prove the concept that this space, this SSTO can build a space station around a moon. Now, it probably won't be able to get to further off places, but it may be able to if you reduce the mass that has to carry. I still have to work on doing long distance SSTOs, but we'll get to them, do not worry. Now as this SSTO only has two nerve rocket engines, that means I have to split the maneuver node to get to the man to two because they're, each maneuver burn is about three minutes long so, and yes you guessed it. Because the further away you are from the, the maneuver node, if I can say it, the less accurate you are on your burn. So that's why you split the maneuver nodes for long burns up into smaller burns. Don't forget to add an extra orbit for your first node to make sure that your final node is going to burn correctly. If you get that. Oh yes, and if you're doing a mid-course correction, do it on the way to the man, especially if you're not in the right inclination. We want this on an equatorial orbit of the man, which means around the equator. So doing your maneuver node, you're doing a maneuver node correction burn on the way to the man is much easier than doing it during the burn towards the man. For some reason, every time I try to do that correction, when I'm trying to do the burn, it seems to take a lot more effort to create that maneuver node to get that equatorial orbit. But trust me, you want to get equatorial orbit if you want to send more further space planes or space station parts to the man and then finally rendezvous with them. Okay, the first one is quite easy because we only want to get to an 80 km orbit, roughly, and then deploy the space station. I think I realized by here, I really should have had RCS to this SSTO, or at least to this core of the space station so I could thrust it away from the SSTO. You can see him wiggle it away, I realized that I, I could use time accelerate to accelerate myself away from it. But hey presto, this SSTO works. Well, let's not jump the gun. We ne still need to return the SSTO to the Kerbal Space Center. And yes, I'm gonna do a Kerbal Space Center landing. Let's hope the explosions are fun and, well, I really hope they're far and few between, but they're always fun. Anyway, before we go, let's get Valentina on EVA. Now I'm using this mod called EVA Enhancements. 
it adds extra controls. The problem with EVA and KSP is that the thrust from the jetpacks, you can't reduce them. So that's why I put this mod on here. So you could use a reduced thrust version. However, for some reason, this mod seemed to get my Kerbal out of control. You can see it took me four minutes to get Valentina back into the cockpit. Now, don't worry, this mod works. I've checked, I've updated the mod with the latest version and it's working great now. But it is a, a mod worth downloading and installing. Doesn't alter the base game, just gives you a little extra control. If you're worried about keeping it stock game. It should be something that added, it should be stock to the game in the first place. Right, the return to Kerbin. Now I've got enough Delta V on this to be able to get back into orbit around Kerbin. And that was purposely done, I think. I can't remember if I did the calculations properly or if it was by accident. But working out the delta V in space is a lot easier than trying to work out your delta V that you need to get into orbit with the weight of the space plane and the lift. It's still one of my cruxes, I suppose, my kryptonite in KSP and why I've taken so long to get to space planes. But I'm handling it pretty well. I've I'm quite surprised at how easy it is compared to what I thought it was. Normally I would slap it together and, well, make fun of myself when I fail and then go back to rockets. Although I do have to admit, controlling is a bit hard. When you're in space, it's a lot easier because it's just basically a rocket with wings, which don't do anything in space. And to tell you the truth, Another reason why I don't use SATOs is because they're very inefficient. Although they're fun and they're challenging, they are very inefficient. inefficient. That is why SpaceX and Elon Musk use rockets. Anyway, let's talk about the re-entry. What you want to do is burn off most of your speed when you're about 30 kilometers, like I'm doing here. Realize I'm starting to drop under air and getting close to the KSC and going over shoot. So let's pull up. I think I do lose control by here. A little bit? Uh, no, quite a lot. <laughs> yes, and that's why I've got the slow-mo mod on, so I can click on the fuel tanks, transfer the fuel across. You just probably saw, before re-entry, I transferred the fuel to the front of the space plane that was trying to make it stable for landing. But now we want the control. I think you want the center of mass further back. But as you can see, I'm still having trouble with that. I have to work out where we need that center mass. Do we need it further back or do we need it forward? It's quite interesting. I'll have to build a mini space plane or jet just to test it out, especially since it seems to be work, seems to work different at different speeds. Does the center of lift shift as you're going faster? I've never worked or really found out about that. Okay, we're coming in for the landing. Normally this ends in explosions, but hey, I survived. I'm on the runway. Well, barely, <laughs> but I survived. Okay, let's get this thing off the runway and cause some explosions. <laughs> yeah, it's not an orbital landing without an explosion or two. So let me know in the comments below what you think of this. Anything I could add to this or, well, I'm going to be making a Mark III a space plane, probably build another space dish, probably in orbit around Kerbin this time because I didn't have enough time to build more than three parts of the space station. So I'm going to leave you by here. There's a bit more to the video where I send two more modules up to the space station. Just let me know what you think.